welcome to our closing session. Um, I'm on the screen twice because I'm going to share my screen a bit in this session. So <laughs> I'm looking at myself. But welcome, welcome to our closing session of Living Our Values, Care, Culture and Power in Aid Organisations. It's been a great few days, um, loads of interesting sessions. We're going to reflect a little bit on that. We're going to invite you to reflect a bit on what's next for you, for us um, individually in our organisations and collectively. We're going to ask you to get involved. The first thing we're going to do is invite you into a little bit of your own reflection. And in our opening, we invited you to think about what you wanted to plant, what you wanted to tend to, or what you wanted to see bloom over these two days together. And we're just gonna open with a few of our own reflections on what we've, what we've seen, what we've seen planted, what we've seen tended, and what we've seen bloom over these few days. And so I'm going to begin very briefly by just saying, like, for me, this gathering has been like, I think I said in the intro, like, we kind of planted seeds in our mapping and then we were tending to them the last year or so. And we held some conversations in different parts of the world that took the mapping from the Working Well report to through the Leading Well report into this gathering where we have brought lots of people together because that's one of the needs that we heard in the initial mapping. This event in itself is like a blooming, you know, it's like, a, oh, there was some work underground, we planted a seed and now there's something we can see. There's some kind of connections. And then knowing that flowers come and go, right, there's also seeds being planted here that lots of things that I've heard about, connections that have been cultivated, um, ideas. I was in the session on culture change this morning and heard the seeds of ideas of people wanting to meet and discuss those co topics in an honest and open space between organisations. So that's one seed I've heard. Um, there are many others. Um, I've just been in Gemma Holdy's session, really interesting discussion around um, her work and other people's work on organisational culture there also. I'm, there are many more. Those are the two that came first to my mind. They're the two things I've just been in. It, it's not to prioritise the seeds. <laughs> but I wanted to also ask Hope and Melissa, maybe come to you, Hope, first. What have you heard what seeds have you heard what tending have you have witnessed what have you seen bloom <laughs> uh thank you very much mary Ann. many seeds and they are scattered all over the world but these are a few that i have picked organizations are people their hearts minds and bodies and it is these people with their hearts minds and bodies that are vehicles that enable the work of organizations to be done if you can service your vehicle how can you not service people's bodies we tend to pay more attention to things little things but really not not human bodies when an organization It is ungrounded, it has no fire, people are just technicians, they come and work. In, in one group, we say this organization constipated, nothing gets out. They, they, they drain, they drain, they drain, they drain, nothing ever gets out. You know, they brought and they make people unhappy, they are constipated. And they need to be attended to because when you know they remain constipated for a long time then something is bound to erupt personal organized personal and organizational transmit 
go hand in hand. You can't say you're transforming the organization when you are not transforming yourself. So it starts from there. The person, the person is political. Being well is not achieved by just systems and structures. It is achieved by changing power structures. And I think we've talked about those power structures of racism, power structures of class, power structures of gender, power structures of, you know, all kinds of power. And you can't claim to be working for a just society if you ignore the well-being of your people. Don't stand out there and write reports and write magazines and go on TV and claim you are working for a just society if you are not paying attention to the well-being of your people. So over to you, Melissa. I, I was telling my colleagues in the CS Alliance Secretariat um, earlier this week, I felt like this global gathering was almost like a wedding. Uh, when I had my wedding, I was very nervous because there are people coming from all over the world. Many had never met each other. And I was worried, will they have a good time? <laughs> will they connect with each other? But I've been very inspired by some of the seeds that have been planted in this gathering because I feel like uh, we put people in a similar table and observe the conversations and the people didn't seem to be too bored. Um, there are a lot of surprises with Hoppins technology, for example. <laughs> it kept us uh, on our toes. Um, but I, I was thinking of the, the feelers and the healers coming together. We, we had people talking about mental health first aid, Imogen Wall, and, and there was a, a conversation in that session where you saw people kept picking up practical tools. How do I get in touch with Imogen to do future work with my organization? So you saw already, oh, this is something I really benefit from. My organization should take advantage. How do we continue the conversation? In the session this morning, raise the standard. We saw connections being made between what already exists in the core humanitarian standard with the indicators. How can we harness that and do more with it? Um, I found unlocking a lot of really important reflection there. Uh, the session on, for example, measuring well-being as a strategic organizational imperative. We had people participating from insurance sector, which has been looking at these things really in a very sophisticated way um, because it impacts the bottom line. And they're connecting with people who work on surveys, who work in HR, who work in risk. So just to see these people working in different spaces come into the same space for me, it's kind of like a dream come true. A lot of people have written to me about the CEO donor roundtable that we held yesterday. It was only one hour, but we had uh, 28 participants from donors and CEOs who were able to really reflect on the, the leading well report. How can we keep this conversation going on well being and organizational culture? And these are people, we all hold power. These people hold power in, uh, in a different way. That's really important. So I would just say for me, it's a, our wedding isn't over yet, but I would love to see uh, some collaborations kind of organically coming out of this because uh, people were able to connect and see value in each other's work. Thanks, Melissa. <laughs> I'm here thinking two weddings in a lifetime are enough, but the, <laughs> but, um, but I know what you mean. There's a, there was a sense of bringing people together. That's really beautiful. So um, what we want to do is we want to invite you to um, reflect a bit for yourself and then reflect a bit with us. And we're going to use these slides and I'm, I'm going to put them in the chat. It's one of the these Google presentations that you'll be able to also write in um, when we get to the, sh uh, the shared part of this. But the first thing in here is going to be reflecting for yourself. And we're just going to give you a few minutes to think about these things. So what seeds are you taking back home to your organization, to your community, to your movement, to the rest of your life? You know, put the word that fits for you there. Choose another one. But what seeds are you taking back home? And maybe you're in your home right now. 
but we're envisaging we've been together these days. What are you taking away with you? And what will you commit to tending to? What will you commit to tending to next? And what do you hope to see bloom a few years from now? What seeds are you taking back home to your organization, community movement or the rest of your life? What will you commit to tending to? And what do you hope to see bloom a few years from now? And we're just going to give you, yeah, we're going to give you five minutes to, and you could think about it. You could get a piece of paper and a pen and just write down your ideas. We want to give you this space to do this thinking now um, for yourself. And I'll put the questions in the chat, but I'll take that slide down and put the music on again. And if you don't like music while you're thinking, you can mute it. <laughs> we'll be back in about five minutes to share together um, about some of these things. So um, it, just if you want to, I'll put the questions in the chat and then you can go to the slides if you want to look at them. Um, and I'll put the music on again. I know this old man, he lives in a house on the hill Each day I pass, he's sitting there, rocking in his chair I lift my hand in greeting, he smiles in return and then one day he says, come here, child, I have words to tell. Come and I will share with you secrets you have never heard before. There is magic in the air, magic in the air. All you do is listen to the breeze. Let your troubles wash away May your heart be the one to steer you on Daughter of the sun It is a sign of wisdom to let go but that within your life bringing you burden Take each day as it comes And each lesson it brings Here is what I know There is a part of you perfect in you A part of you that shines beyond this world there is a part of every person you know that lights your way. All you do is listen to the breeze. And when it rains, let your troubles wash away. May your heart be the one to steer you on, daughter of the sun. Listen to the breeze When it rains, let your troubles wash away May your heart be the one to steer you on 
daughter of the sun. Hi everyone. So we'd love to hear some reflections from those of you who are listening. What have you, what, what came up for you in that few reflective minutes? Maybe something about what you want to tend to, something about the seeds you're taking back with you or something about what you want to see bloom in future. So we'd love to hear some reflections on that in the chat. Um, and then shortly we will also be doing like a group sharing in the slides. But if anyone is here and would like to share just a little bit of what came up for them, we'd love to hear it. Maybe while, I, while we do that, Hope, I'll ask you, was there something you reflected on you'd like to share? You're on mute. Sorry. Um, the thing I kept re reflecting on is how we are stuck in organizational structures. So much so that even when those structures are not enabling, we still retain them. Why can't we just do away with them and create what we think works? And power structures indicate power. They, they are really a reflection of power within organizations. It, it doesn't matter if we say we keep an open door policy. You can keep that door open and no one walks in. We can talk about safe spaces, but those don't make us brave, not necessarily. You can talk about wanting to change things, but you sometimes like what our organograms are like. For 20 years, you're at the bottom of an organization. An organization that claims to provide empowerment or provides tools of empowerment of the constituency, but for 20 years, you're occupying one position. And every time you go into an organization, you see yourself at the bottom. How can that be? How can one, you know, um, get empowered that way? So I think till we get re rid of some of these structures, we are not going to get anywhere. Why can't we allow people spaces to name themselves what they want to be in organization, provided they know what they are going to do? Anyone can provide a beautiful, can, can provide beautifully if they are given the power to do what they are supposed to do. If, they, if you remove structures so that they don't always think that they are at the bottom of the scale, being at the bottom is really an insult. And if we don't change that, that, the structures, the organizational structures that really has the power that we have, I don't know that we are going to, to change very much. So you've led us into what we want to do together now. So we're going to do a few group sharings where you go into the Google Slides. And this is our first question. If you were to start an organization now, what would you want to include given what we have explored together during the gathering? And you can do that on slides six and seven, which are... They're two, they're the same. So you can go into either of them and you can just write some thoughts 
what would you include now if you were to start an organization and maybe you're you know you never thought in your life of starting an organization that's okay this is more of an imagining it's not you don't have to go do it <laughs> but it's more of thinking like what would you include and hmm. or, or and it could also be you might say actually what would you not include you could also put and um those stars are for like if you wanna if you see someone else's and you think it's really one that you really resonate with you can also star it make some sense mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. oh you can't mm -hmm. oh they're view only sorry they shouldn't be <laughs> hold on but but uh while that is changing we could also ask if a young person intent on starting an organization comes to you and wants your help an organization that is people-centered what advice would you give them they start an organization if you are the one fine but if someone else who is much younger than you wants to start an organization an organization of the future what would you advise them to do Great. Let me see something. So I'd love to see your reflections. And I know the slide's not very visible, so I, I'm going to take the slide actually down so that you can see Hope and I, because I think most of you are in the Google Doc now. Um, I don't think we need to share it as well there we are <laughs> um so seeing what people are writing in the document um and you can go to the next page if there's not space for what you want to write and you can pull those um they're kind of like post-its you can pull them out and uh or you know delete one if there's one in the way it's fine there's there, there's you're going to be um precious about the shapes that that are there they're just um they're just just some random shapes and yeah so there's more space on slide seven so seeing seeing some great stuff every person is encouraged and connected to support develop cultures that listen and encourage feedback yeah, it will be about solidarity, cross-fertilization and co-creation, two-way, no more aid organization. Yeah. Oblige the management to work in the lower positions in order to know what the positions in the org are about. Get the field experience. Self-managed teams valuing the whole process and trained in nonviolent communication. Um, yeah, and if you particularly love one, do put a star on it. I see a few stars. Co-creative and organic approach to structures and power. I see one coming on slide seven. Everyone works part-time so they can do other things. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's also, I think, evidence-based, right? There's some pretty good evidence that if people have, a, you know, they're not doing the same thing all week, they they thrive in their work. <laughs> yeah, someone's talked about the four-day week. Yeah, more accountability. Throw away the idea that a productive working day should contain eight hours. <laughs> Be mindful towards the team. You know, seeing have the CHS at the core and make sure it's lived. Okay, like living those principles. Um, seeing, I'll give we'll give a few more minutes. Is, are you seeing anything you want to reflect on? Hope. No, I think it's so clear. It's so self-explanatory that I don't want to be it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Oh, 
we'll give a few more minutes, as I said, because I see people still writing. Live our values and be held accountable. Everyone has to go through listening, skills training, and skillful conversations. That speaks to something I think about a lot, like valuing re relationship skills. I don't know if that's the right word, but the, you know those things you're talking about there. And building them, like choosing intentionally to build them in ourselves, right? Yeah. Um, An option to dance at the end of meetings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also less meanness, as Danny talked about yesterday. Yeah, that was so that was it in the CEO session. So people may not have heard that, but um, yeah. Understanding and accepting that being inclusive. Oh, I don't know. Not having control, right? Yeah. Rituals for valuing one another. Yeah, people get enough resources to live in a capitalist society until we can build a better society, right? It's another thing I think about a lot, how we have to navigate what's here and now as we envision what we want, you know, that we have to hold that balance, right? And sometimes it's frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well-being is a continuous process. I, think I might even like to work in this organization we're co-creating here. <laughs> right, Hope? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so waiting. <laughs> Brilliant. So you people can continue adding if they want to, and also adding stars to any that they love. It'd be nice just to sort of see that reflected there. And I think we might do something with this. Um after the meeting, you know, just sort of reflect it back. I, I'm imagining, and I don't know, Melissa, we haven't even talked about this, but I'm imagining almost like a visual representation of it, you know, like an artistic one in some way of, of these things. Yeah, we actually were thinking when we were designing this to maybe uh, engage some artists. Hmm. And now we have oh. some great material. What would that look <laughs> yeah. like? What would that look like? <laughs> 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 we can put it on our walls for our vision board. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Ooh, uh, Gemma knows knows someone, so let's talk afterwards. Right. And so, as you continue to add there, we just want to also invite you to the next set of slides. So this is the same process we've just done, but um. There are three questions and then there are more slides. So people can just pick a slide they want to write in, but um, we want to reflect. So that was about like, what would you create if you were starting from scratch right now? But we also want to create um, a, a set of slides around like what we could build together from where we are, like from our lived reality where we are right now. Um, what could we build together? So ideas of what we could build together and that we could be, you know, everyone who's attended this conference or just a few people, like it doesn't need to be sort of restricted to a specific idea of who the we is, but like, what could we build? What ideas have you had? What seeds have been planted in your mind that you want to tend to and you want to share? You, you know, you might have reflected on things a moment ago that were more personal, but are there some that you want to share around what we could build together? And some of these might be things that CHS could continue to support. Some of them might be things that you know you could take forward with others you've connected with. So what could we build together? We'd also love to hear what excites you most from this gathering. What are you leaving with some excitement, enthusiasm about? And then we have like a final one. What would it look and feel like if we were to achieve the collective visions we're holding here? And you can answer all of these or just like one or two of them. And there, there are how many slides? There are two slides for each question. 
So you can choose where you want to go, where you feel like you want to share, whether it's an idea you want to share for doing stuff together, whether it's you just want to share your excitement right now and you're not quite sure what's next, or whether it's like you just want to set, share whatever sense you have of what something could look and feel like if we were to achieve some of our collective visions. Um, oh, Smoothie's got a drawing she wants to share. Yes, in a moment, let's let's find a way to do that. So yeah, so just the invitation is to go into those slides. So it's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They're up for anyone to be writing into and then we will reflect some of it back to you. But Smriti, yes, come uh, do a request to join us. I know you are, you're uh, you you've got previous experience. I'm thinking of you, yeah, requesting to join us and then maybe like holding up. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, it, uh, it's on my screen. Um, and let me just see if I can find it. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I took a photograph of it. And, uh, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. People are right. Well, it's because I did it earlier in the last session and, <laughs> and then I left here. So. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, is there any way of, of sharing the screen? Yeah. How do I do uh, Do you see, how many buttons do you see underneath us? Um, do you none. see like you I don't see, see like a wheel yeah and then do you see the screen with the red line yeah that's the screen share oh uh, okay so if you click on there you should be able to get you should get not everyone does but most people do um get a choice of things to share on your from your screen Hmm. No. Uh, okay. Are you on a Mac? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You might have a problem with screen share. No problem, Sorry. No <laughs> Sorry. I will. I will. Uh, send, I will send it by um, by mail or upload it on the on the page. Yeah. Lovely. Sorry. Yeah. You could you could email it now to one of us. Yeah. Actually, I can do that. I'm you just. Can do, yeah. I just email it to um, Melissa now and yeah, yeah. show it. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to reflect a bit on what I'm seeing because I'm seeing loads of things around what we could build together. Um, clusters of organic collaboration, like joint measuring and learning, well being on well being, pooling resources developed internally within our organizations. Um, Collectively demand changes to the ways we're funded to help shift power. No staff care plan equals no funding. That should be a basic donor regulation. Improve the CHS to include power and privilege, gender, age, diversity, etc. A database of participants to call on when needed. Together we can push donors to include well-being of staff as a key indicator for success, together with community evaluations. How can we develop coaching, mentorship and supervision work as a key practice to support staff at all levels? Um, what's that one? A network of, oh, I need to do it, like feeling people to dialogue together regularly and supportive of one another. A global gathering every year to keep this community connected. Mm, deep listening sessions for, around the sector for CEOs, donors and boards.
Melissa, do you want to reflect on any of those or have any questions about any of those? I love it. All of them. Let me try to have it. <laughs> yeah. It's sent. I'm hearing a sound. Is that you? Is that on one of your? Oh no, it's gone now. Is that? Yeah, it's okay. Um, what excites you most? Tangible examples. More feminist panelists change the tone that, that there's resonance between people regarding the need for well being. Some of the harder conversations about power. Let us know what's excited you, what you're taking away. Um, and then what would it look and feel like if we were to achieve our collective visions? Because that's that, that, that last one is more of a like, invitation to back to the the dreaming of what could what could it be like if we were to achieve the things that we've moved toward, towards together in this these two days so Marianne I'm trying to share the photo yeah. And I, I hit the screen and then I say, it says, will you allow it to see your screen? I select yeah. the screen and then I yeah. hit allow. Yeah. Do you see it? No, it doesn't happen. Are you on a Mac? Yes, but look at me. I have two screens. So I'll just point it to my screen. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it's it? A bit it's a little bit, yeah, we actually can. It can be seen. <laughs> we can't read it, but we can see it. <laughs> yes. It's about quality of connection, heart nourishing. Uh, they, it's talk about love um, in terms of uh, the seeds. I heard a lot about sowing the seeds, the generosity, connecting to reality, and then growing things, right, from connected, being connected together. And here's a, here's the seed, here's the plant, here's a little bud and here's a flower. So, you know, how do we do that together? Well, do it with heart, do it with heart. Yes. I love that. So many I can see from <laughs> I am. I was born in Uganda. I was born in Jinja in Uganda. Oh really? Come back yes. home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> come back. <laughs> I think those listening and you and you've been inputting on the slides and that's really great. And I see people still writing on them. But I'm wondering if anyone would like to come on as well um, and just reflect on what they've seen, what they've heard, anything that you're taking away, committing to tend to, looking forward to see bloom. You know, like if you'd like to reflect on, on that, anyone, we'd be uh, very uh, happy to see others on the screen with us as we move towards our closing remarks and things but we you know we've got like 10 minutes so if anyone would like to come on and also reflect as we as we add things to the to the slides we'd be very happy to see you and uh, as i've now become probably a little bit boring saying you have to click on the <laughs> yellow thing that says share audio and video if you'd like to ask to join us and then uh, we can let you on <laughs> Bye, Smoothie. <laughs> Seeing um, some more ideas of things we could build together. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of people coming on. Hi. 
Hi. Hi. Hi. Hi. I'm so cute. Oh, um, I'm trying to get all the I'm a long time back, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lynn, go ahead, go ahead, because I see you excited. So, go ahead first. Yeah, I was really excited to so know that Hope is on this. I'm sorry, not everybody else, but I just had to come on because uh, to to make that contact and Hope. We've been talking a lot about all these things before, and I'm really inspired by the uh, your book of the organization with the soul. I'm trying to do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, this is a great start to, you know, trying to really come down to grips with what is it that we're talking about? What is it that we're trying to do we to change and to make things new? Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of out of the organizational <laughs> sector now, but uh, doing things just uh, freelance and uh, yeah, around place but I, I i've been quite uh, excited to see that you know the, the, the kind of thinking and the kind of the, yeah that's still going on it's still going on which is <laughs> that we have not there's still lots of challenges there that, that we did re recognize in the last workshop that i was about changing structures changing organizational culture which um you know we, we came to realize that yes there is much more realization that individually we need to take care of ourselves we need to be well we need to think but it comes down to really how do you do it in a group in an organization with each other the challenges are still really great but it's not to do but it's exciting Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Exciting, but still lots of challenges that we've talked about a lot. And Sophie. Thanks. No, I think I think, you know, just reading all the fantastic ideas coming up with this new organization, I felt very inspired to join it. <laughs> so so great. I think we, we we have the ideas and we have the skills. The thing is, you know, why is it so difficult for us? to actually make those changes and I mean we have to change ourselves starting there but also change our organization so anyway I think this has been a great gathering um the session I've followed have been really very good so thank you so much for driving this I think it's very exciting I have one question to you guys is around something that I'm very interested in is around coaching mentoring and supervision and how could we see that those practices could be part in a much more systemic way in our organization to help the change we need to do because we all know when we try to change ourselves i mean it's hard work and it's you know and we are stumbling and sometimes we feel really vulnerable or we are afraid or we you know make errors and we have to accept them i mean it's a journey as an individual but it's also for the organization and and we need in a way we need to recognize that so my question is you know for what we could do going forward people interesting in that maybe could come together and discuss that how could we have it and not use it only as a privilege for the executives in organization but actually see that this should be something that everybody would have and we should have people from all parts of the world speaking different languages not you know having it as really a way to keep privilege and power but to use it as a way to change because the methodology needs a little bit to be adapted but it's possible and i think there are a lot of interesting things around that so that was one of the part i was talking about you know and the second the last thing i would say before i will leave space for someone else is actually how could we when would we be ready to navigate away from being an aid organization to actually be an organization around solidarity because we in the aid we think we help the rest many times i felt i've been more helped myself uh, and recognize what we learn and how we grew as individual in this kind of work we need to we need to you know strike that balance a little bit you know is it always aid or is it something else what, why are we doing this and what what kind of organization do we stand for so anyway some questions there thank you
Yeah, and Sophie, actually, I, I was going to come to Hope. I see Hope you've gone in the chat, but please do speak it because it's important. Because Hope... The, the African Women's Development Fund has been doing coaching for the past maybe 10 years. Coaching, not directors, but middle level young women so that they can embody some of the things we've discussed. Maybe not everything we've discussed, but nuggets of what we have discussed. Uh, because it became very clear that even when uh, a director you know, uh, knows things, they may not pass on the knowledge to the middle level, especially young women. Uh, it's something that we could learn from and build on. Um, and, you know, it, it's one of those things that came out of a need, expressed in need, where it became very, very clear that uh, most organizations don't pay attention to that middle level, you know, um, category. And they, 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 there is some training that sports may be not very comprehensive, but that program is there too. Because as we said, fish starts rotting from the head. So if a mid-level person knows what to do, but the head person doesn't want to change, it can be very difficult. So governance board members are brought in every now and again. Yeah, every now and again. Yeah, thanks, Hope. And I wonder, I don't know, it, it feels like there's more learning from that that could be shared somehow, you know, just something around the process and what others could do. I don't know. We've just, maybe that's the one thing that we could think about in terms of sharing resources and learning for, through the project, the initiative, sorry. Um, is, would anyone else like to come on? We are going to close shortly. I know it's Friday afternoon in Europe and um, maybe... Um, Friday evening or Friday lunchtime or morning for you, depending where in the world you are. But we know we said we'd finish at half past four Geneva time. Um, my mum always used to say we come home early on Fridays. And my <laughs> when my dad came in like late again <laughs> from whatever he was doing. And I, I try to honour that <laughs> in the spirit of, you know, we all need to rest at the weekend. So or when we can, knowing that many people work mm -hmm. at the weekend, but we all need to rest, we all need times to rest, right? Um, Hope, did you want to add something? <laughs> so um, I'm going to hand to Melissa for some final reflections, and then Hope and I will close us out with some thank yous and gratitude. Melissa. Um. Marianne and I, we had uh, a moment in 2019 where we kind of did this similar approach. We came up with the vision uh, and our vision was let's have contextualized conversations and then bring it all together in a global way. Originally the idea was we would have kind of a face-to-face -face event in a kind of retreat, like a re party retreat vibe and everyone could be face to face and then COVID happened. But I actually appreciate this kind of space because it brings uh, people who wouldn't necessarily be able to travel. Um, but the fact that we've gotten from 2019 to today, that we've gotten over 300 people to register for this event, even though there's a lot of competing time pressures and there are people from 56 different countries who have registered and from over 90 organizations and from um, every level, even CEO and from donor um, and not just the traditional donors, but we've got some foundations. For me, um, it just shows that the time is now. A lot of people, they said, we've tried this before and then people move on. But I think the time is now to really emphasize the importance of the person, the importance of looking at uh, the power dynamics and the challenges and the tapping into the wisdom of people like yourselves who care and who are willing to come together. So I just want to thank you all as participants for coming. We're going to take all these great slides and, and pictures, maybe put some into art, at least put it into a summary document and put some videos on YouTube for, for those of you who couldn't do everything. We've got volunteers from six people um, who are going to write blogs about the Global Gathering. And we've already got one blog by Panos Muntzis, 
who's at the Global Executive Leadership Institute, who's talking about the leadership perspectives on this topic. And I'm looking forward to working with the others who have volunteered to blog on this. Uh, we'll be continuing these conversations through the Embodying Change podcast, through uh, several opportunities to connect, um, but we're definitely open to your ideas. I wanted to also just give a shout out. Thank you so much to Helen on tech, to Gazelle on the chat. Gazelle has a big event happening in one month. It's the Humanitarian Human Resources um, event. It's bringing together humanitarian human resources people from all over the sector, looking at accountability in HR. And I think that really resonates with a lot of you. Um, so we'll put a link in the chat to that event. We really encourage you to sign up for it, continue the conversation there. I wanna thank Bona who helped me with my session today on Raise the Standards, um, building on the connection there to the core humanitarian standard. And Sophie Louise was in that session with us, co-facilitating a breakout. Um, got some really great conversations there. Sharina and Rosa have been behind the scenes working on communications, helping us uh, with our membership there, been terrific. And a big thank you to Tanya Wood, the Executive Director of CHS Alliance Secretariat. Um, when I came to her in 2019 and said, why don't we look at well-being? It's in the standard. She was very open and she was uh, insisting that we look at compassion, even if the word compassion might get pushed back from some saying we really need to tap into our values as a sector and how we live our values. So I want to really thank Tanya for um, making this a priority and seeing how we can carry this conversation. Uh, Hope, I, I was so inspired when I learned about your work building strategies for an organization with a soul. I read that and I, I actually printed it out. And uh, I, I'm, I'm almost starstruck to have had this opportunity to get to know you over this time. So I'm just really grateful to you for co-hosting with Mary Ann and for taking the time, even though um, you also are very busy. I've always appreciated your wisdom. And Mary Ann has disappeared from the screen because I wanted to thank her. Um, we've been working together since 2019 and this has been a big lift. Uh, I was uh, very confident that we could do this because of the amazing work she and the Healing Solidarity Collective have done together, bringing people and using the skills of facilitation and tech. So really a big thanks to you, Marianne. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, the doorbell so went. <laughs> That's okay. I will sing your praises again soon. Just to say, um, it's been such a pleasure working with Mary Ann. She's been so patient, and um, it's great that she also has a coaching background. When I get stressed, she reminds me to stay centered and to tap into what resources me. So, just a big thank you to Mary Ann. Uh, amazing, huge lift. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know who you thanked and who you didn't. <laughs> Hope, did you track? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I want to thank the resource persons. The resource persons gave us a basket of seeds. They gave us this basket. And in the basket, they reminded us, check all corners and ensure that everyone is taken care of. Those corners, those, those undiscussables, we need to light them so that you know, we can see the silenced voices, the voices that just, you know, we saw the, 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 the voices that mama, the voices that you know, I never heard. We need to point in those corners so that we understand what is there. And that's what they, the resource person have been telling us. They have reminded us, take care of ourselves. No matter what happens, take care of yourself. And that's what they have reminded us to do. They have also told us that we should document stories. We should document what works and what doesn't work so that we can start sharing information. They have reminded us that uh, when, when <clears throat> we need to keep sanitizing organizations with or without COVID, we need to sanitize so that we don't try to disrepair. We continue thinking about the health of the organization. 
And they have reminded us too that it's okay, once in a while we can have mentos, we can have sweets, it's okay, we can have chocolates. And something that we didn't talk about very much is the way everyone needs, no, we actually talked about, they told us about everyone pulling. It's not just one person. Everyone has got, if we are going to really talk about organizations that take care, when it is the lowest person, the youngest person, the person who is different, we all need to keep pulling, pulling. That is what is required. Something we didn't talk about very much is the issue of poverty. We've talked about funds as they come from the funders, but we've not said much about poverty within the system. Because they are people who can't keep themselves. So let's try it. No, I could have gone on with this basket, but I can't stop without talking about rest. We have to rest. We need to rest. This work will never end. We need months where we can rest. So, you know, the resource person have really given us a huge basket of seeds, and it's up to us. It's up to each one of us to take those seeds and make something of ourselves because we, we build the path by walking it. And I think people are, are really trying to walk now. And it's not just any walk. Walking, but mindful of everyone so that it's collective, you know, uh, walking. And it's not just the resource person, it's everyone here. We have all put in the basket and the basket is very rich. When we started, I couldn't carry the basket. I, I could carry the basket. Now I can hardly carry the basket because we've all put in things. It's heavy, but beautiful. So thanks very much to the resource persons. Thanks very much to everyone who is here. Thanks very much to those who initiated the program. Thanks very much to those who said, no, we have to continue with this discussion. I'm happy. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. I have uh, nothing to add apart from to thank for my point. Um, very much hope for being my co-facilitator in this event and to CHS Alliance for putting the event on and supporting it and to all of you for coming and participating. I'm going to put on some music to play us out. I wish you all a wonderful rest of your Friday, a great weekend, and we let's stay in touch. And I know that Melissa will be reaching out to keep us connected. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs>